gathered you here together on Friday, September 8th, 2017, because in exactly 160 days, you will be back here in this theater screening your completed documentary film. Every final product has a beginning, a moment when all that exists is a vision of what's to come. For us, that moment was early September, 2017, standing in the Four Rivers common room with a collection of charts, graphs, and images. We analyzed these documents and their relationship to our overall topic, right, energy. So you're trying to figure out what your group is, which power source, and how all these different pieces connect to it. Go for it, folks. With our world on the brink of a climate crisis, energy is the most pressing issue of our time, one with relevance to our lives and our future. If you solve the energy problem, if you solve that one problem, all of a sudden a bunch of the other problems on that list have a pathway towards a reasonable solution. And so teaching about the energy issue um, I think is really important, and I also think that it's not frequently done. At the Greenfield Garden Cinema, we received our challenge and our vision of what was to come. Over the next five months, we would create an original documentary film on a regional energy issue with national significance. Steve Alves, local documentary filmmaker, taught us about filmmaking and the task that lay in front of us. I have basically one strong message for all of you, and it's finish the film. That's the goal. Beyond everything else, you got to finish the film. When we first went to the garden cinemas, I really thought it was going to be a complete mess and that we weren't going to be able to do it at all. When we were uh, in the garden at first, I was pretty excited about it. I obviously didn't know exactly what we were doing. I don't think any of us did at that point. I mean, I knew it was going to be a monumental task. The Four Rivers Senior Energy Expedition began seven years ago with a vision for an expedition that would respond to a current societal need and integrate challenging content across all disciplines. It was something that crossed over like really clearly with science and social studies and it was also the year that Vermont Yankee was up for relicensing. So we had this local case study that people had really strong feelings about. It was a big deal in this area. After a few years experimenting with different culminating products, Division Three teachers arrived at the idea of a documentary film. This product, which would require advanced skills and content knowledge, would come to drive the focus of the expedition itself. Landing on that product idea was, you know, started to really drive the direction that the expedition went in. This year, 2017 to 2018, was the fourth year that a senior class created an original documentary film. In that time, the project itself has evolved, with Division Three teachers developing structures to help all students participate throughout the process. My brother made the first film that any Four Rivers class made here. I remember talking to him about the whole process and how much less organized that was. I was really glad to find out that ours was a bit more structured and that we had actual teams. Before we could create a film on a local topic, we needed to learn about the larger energy issue. We studied the technical aspects in physics and math, including the levelized cost of energy and a comparative analysis of different energy sources. In civics, we learned systems mapping, using this tool to examine the relationship between social, economic, and environmental aspects of the energy crisis. With a more nuanced understanding of the larger context, we narrowed our focus down to smaller case studies. We divided into six teams each with a different potential film topic. In these teams, we had to figure out how to turn our topic into a proposal for a film. We examined documentary film structure in English class, learning the language of filmmaking and how to convey a compelling narrative through visual means. Then, we conducted research into these regional issues, including meeting with experts and examining the perspectives of various stakeholders. In late October, we held a board meeting to pitch our potential films. As a class, we decided Block Island Wind would be the subject of our documentary. With the world overrun by pollution and health problems created by years of dangerous, dangerous energy production, 
The U.S. is desperately far behind in the fight for renewable energy compared to other countries. Block Island may be paving the future for our country with offshore wind power, but why did projects like Cape Wind fail, and what is the future for offshore wind? With a film topic chosen, the real work began. We had to return to building background knowledge. We conducted a debate tournament on the topic of whether the interest of coastal communities should take precedence in the development of offshore wind. After the debate, we shifted into teams to prepare for filming. One team wrote the story of the film, crafting a narrative arc and determining the focus of each chapter. Working closely with them was our interview team. They researched interview subjects and wrote questions that would help tell our story. Another team created storyboards to guide our on-location filming. Some students became camera and audio technicians, learning how to use and troubleshoot the technical equipment for filming. Finally, the file management team held the organizational component of the project, devising a system for naming and cataloging the footage we would shoot while on location. With each student becoming an expert in one aspect of the film production, we were able to combine forces into four self-supported film teams. In early December, these film teams went on the road. We traveled to Boston, New Bedford, Cape Cod, and Providence, conducting interviews and shooting B-roll footage. I was an interviewer. I wasn't one of the brilliant minds behind angles, cameras, and everything else, but I tried to frame questions in a way that would get people as interested as I was. I didn't meet any senators, but I met a couple of powerhouses at a few companies, and that was kind of cool. That just the charter school got to talk to people that were like making huge energy changes. That evening, we all met up at the Green School in Rhode Island, where we'd be spending the night. We ate pizza and talked about our adventures. We all just had this really deep conversation, <laughs> and it just like, and it was so weird because I was like, I was talking to Dylan, and Milu was part of it, and then more people just like accumulated into the conversation. Dylan registered a bunch of us to vote. It was just like it was all over the place, but it was so cool. I think that trip really like got our class like closer together, and like I came in the beginning of the year, I was like, wow, I don't want to be here, I just want to get over with, but like, I'm friends with like a lot of our class because of that trip. There's just like a nice bonding experience. The next morning, we got up at dawn to make the Block Island Ferry. Tim, Stewart, how are you feeling this morning? I'm feeling good. Everyone else seems to be feeling like, uh, uh not good, but uh, I'm feeling good. I really enjoyed going to Block Island itself. I really like being on boats on the ocean. Uh, I spent most of my time outside in the cold. It was just a really great experience. Despite the frigid temperatures, some of us got into the seafaring spirit. What will I do with a drunken sailor? Or lie in the morning? Way hey and up she rises, way hey and up she rises, way hey and up she rises, or lie in the morning. While on the island, we interviewed decision makers and stakeholders as well as Block Island residents, gaining a picture of how the Block Island Wind Project has changed life for this small island community. Where are we, Corey? How we are on Block Island. Give us the island. lingo. Um, we are in a getting out of a taxi. Um, this wonderful friend is bringing us around the island, and we're getting lots of good B-roll. Going out to Block Island and like just looking at all the scenery and how they live. It was a really cool experience, and I. I enjoyed it a lot. It was really fun to like have all these cameras and like be out doing something um, and learning about this topic from people who are in the industry and like right there firsthand. When we were preparing to do field work, I was like, I don't know about this topic. It seems kind of boring. And then when we got there, I was like, oh, this is interesting. And so I felt like everybody just got super excited for it. And it's such a good place to be when you're in a group of like 37 people and everyone's excited about this one goal that you're doing. After filming, we moved into file management. We had shot almost 500 gigabytes of footage, which needed to be named, organized, and uploaded to the Four Rivers server. The story writing team became script writers, turning their narrative outline into a finished script for our narrator. I was part of the, the fine-tuning group who sat down and we just read through the whole script out loud and fixed what needed to be fixed, and we all ended up agreeing very easily. It was very interesting and very fun, and, um, and I didn't think I would ever say that when we were making the script, that it would be fun, but it was. Students transcribed hours of interview footage, inserting relevant quotes into the ever-growing script. Dubbed Megascript, this document became the backbone for the entire post-production process. 
The script group uh, really just made everything possible by going through all our info we had and combining it so I knew exactly what I needed to create. We divided into other groups for the final stage of the documentary filmmaking. Editors separated into teams, with each team claiming one chapter of the six-chapter movie. Editors used Adobe Premiere to turn that chapter from idea to rough cut. The rest of the class served as editing support. One team watched all the clips of B-roll footage, sorting them by chapter. This B-roll team helped match parts of the script to accompanying footage to guide the editors into their process. I've been working with the editors uh, for chapter four and giving them B-roll for their transitions and interviews and narration and then helping them along in case they have a conflict or someone else used that clip by accident or need more footage for whatever reason. An archival footage team scoured the internet and archival databases for video and still photographs to help supplement and enhance the B-roll we had shot ourselves. Our animation team created digital animations that would appear throughout the film. So like, I'm trying to make it look like there's wind blowing on that guy, and I have it moving, but it's the wrong direction. how to use one of the little pads that you draw on connected to the laptop and I made some really cool animations for this documentary. I'm particularly proud of Mac and myself because you know we're not particularly artistic people historically speaking and both of us ended up being final animators. Yeah that's nice to have explored something totally new to me. We face numerous technical challenges. I personally made two animations and I spent two days on them and they are now not being used because some of the people on the script um, made some changes and didn't let us know so we have unnecessary animations. We had to use our available resources to solve problems that arose during the filmmaking process. My thoughts at the beginning was um, Steve, Steve Alves was like, he was telling us that we just had to get it done and like we shouldn't worry about it being perfect. And I remember like at the beginning being like really mad about that, like, oh, why, how could like someone think that, like you have to make it perfect. And now being in the final like editing, final animating space, I'm in that headspace and now I see where he's coming from where it's like, okay. Our class had help throughout the process. Experts in various aspects of filmmaking taught us about their careers and worked one-on-one -on -one with editors and animators. We learned the program After Effects, which is what we use for a lot of our animations from Mr. Patari's friend, Ryan Lee. Ryan Lee was a godsend. Adobe After Effects, he, well, he introduced us to it, and before that we were trying to use Photoshop, and so that was, you know, going from stone tools to the wheel, so to speak. Working with Steve Alves was uh, really interesting because I'd never um, met personally with a filmmaker, let alone someone as renowned as, as him. Obviously it was a little bit humbling to uh, be told that a lot of my editing could be improved, especially by someone as, as skilled as him, but it was a super useful experience and I think it helped me become a better editor. Working with a large group is difficult, and to make our film successful, we needed to collaborate and communicate effectively. This project was one of the, I, I think it had a huge turning point for me um, and a lot of other students in the class because there needed to be communication. That's the only way this, this project could even happen, was through communication and strong communication. Um, it's difficult in a group project, but eventually everyone pulls their weight and gets invested. But I think uh, there was teamwork and uh, groups came together and became actually interested in the project. Um, you know, there's some, seeing what other people are doing, it just makes you feel like, oh man, th these are some really cool animations. You know, I feel like I should provide something cool to the table as well and do my job. Learn more about what it takes to make a documentary, because I've watched a lot of documentaries before, but it never really occurred to me all of the steps that need to be put into it and all the people who are involved. I was like kind of like, oh, this is how the, this stuff is done. I never really had an idea, like when I, if I watch a documentary, like what happens behind the scenes and to get to there, you never really think about that when you're watching it. You kind of just watch what's in front of you. We have come a long way since September. 
in both filmmaking and interpersonal skills. I obviously have learned a lot about offshore wind um, and a lot more about um, environmental issues and how we can work towards, you know, creating greener jobs. I've learned a lot of miscellaneous things. The editing programs, running Google Docs, like the charts and everything, I think I'll do better at that just because of this project. Also people skills. I'm asking weird questions in like an interview format now, just on a regular basis. work on it together and like the stuff that we thought was so impossible at the beginning when we first heard about this was probably my favorite part. It was really interesting just watching it all come together and then being like, oh my god, we made this. Together, we've taken a project from its first vision to its final realization. We're proud of all the work we've done and look forward to seeing the finished product. Hit him on the head with a drunken sailor. Hit him on the head with a drunken sailor. Hit him on the head with a drunken sailor. We're lying in the morning. Way, hey, up she rises. Way, hey, up she rises. Way, hey.